is quite different. Not quite different. Mine is a computer document, so I can so I can make my score faster. The, the first measure is the, the seven pages. It's different. So this is out of date. Okay. System delivery language. Okay. Yours is correct. This is a different class. This is a. Uh, uh, this is a different. This is a written report thing. Okay. Okay. So look on yours, and I'm going to use that one. And you can see the first. The first one is begin on time, right? So if you don't begin on time. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> right? I, I got it here. I, I'm going to open it up here. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so beginning on time is a key, key point. And then uh, ending on time is a key point. And I'm going to have a timer, and I'm going to time. And when the five minutes, you can be under five minutes, but you cannot be over. Okay? And you may think five minutes is kind of okay, it's a long time, it'll be hard to fill up the time, but actually the truth is uh, five minutes is very, very short. It's much harder to make your presentation short than it is to make your presentation long. Making a presentation long is easy. Making a presentation short is hard. Okay, so follow the Follow those points, and that's the, the way I'm going to score you, including things like your organization, your structure that we talked about today, your appearance, right? And then your um, pronunciation and things like that all count. Everything counts, okay? All right, so what we do is we set up the room. We have it at just almost exactly like this with the green screen, and the, we have the lights on. You just walk in, and then I say, are you ready? And you say yes, and I say, okay. <laughs> and then you do it. There is no doing it again. There's no stopping and going back. You cannot do it twice. you got to just do it at once, and you're done. Okay? Well, <laughs> do you feel some pressure? Do you feel pressure? Okay, it'll be great fun. It's very good fun. Okay, so today we were looking at your exercise for the uh, ice cream exercise, right? So in this exercise, I wanted you to uh, fill in the details. Right? I already gave you the outline, kind of. So everyone did a good job. These were the main categories, and then you went down to the subcategories. Okay, that was easy. That wasn't too hard. This week, I want you to do one more homework, but only I want you to, I'm not going to give you any outline. This homework is completely, you make it up, right? So in this case, I want you to create an outline explaining the steps for cooking your instant noodle lunch. And... Everybody knows how to do this, so I, that's why I choose it. I mean, everybody has experience, right? Yes. I don't think anyone here has no experience eating instant noodles, right? And so for the instant noodle, you need to think of what are your categories and what are your subcategories. But remember the goal is to have a beginning and an end and to help the person who's reading or listening to go from here to there. So each step, each step helps you to go to the next step. You see what I mean? Each step helps you to follow the next one. How do you do it? Do you take the point of view from the user? Do you take the point of view from the company? Do you take the point of view from a story? That's all up to you. But there are different ways to do it. And so that's your assignment this week. See if you can create an outline with headings and subheadings and details that has a like a map from beginning to end, how to, how to make your instant noodles. Okay, any question about this? It's in your book, right? Mm -hmm. No question, no problem? Okay. 
All right, and being creative is good. Being creative is good. Be doing something different is good, as we saw today. Uh, Eric, I think, was our most different person today. <laughs> okay, and I, I like Eric's approach. It makes us get interested in it. Okay, before we go on, then I want to finish this uh, chapter we were just covering, the unit number one. So let me come over here. So, unit number one is all about what is the system, right? What is the system we're talking about? Creating a system, making a system, making the system easy to understand, easy to follow. And I think the key point here is uh, planning. Planning. Sometimes when you watch someone make a presentation, you think, oh, that's, they're just, they are good at making a presentation. They have some kind of skill. But that's usually not true. Usually, the truth is, they spend a lot of time planning their presentation. So I'm asking you, please start planning. Now, usually my students, they work very hard, like just before their presentation, the night before they practice. Maybe you want to begin a little bit early, so you can have a nice plan to see how that works. I would suggest begin as soon as you can. Okay. Make sure that you have a clear organization, you have a good plan, a clear organization, and make sure that the information is interesting and relevant to the audience. I think today uh, we had some good examples of this, especially Eric's example, keeping it interesting somehow. Why is interesting important? To get to the next, the next step, the next heading, the next subheading to keep pushing the viewer to go more and more further on. Okay. Impact. Impact meaning that there's a core point. A core point. And I think these things together are important. The impact is, like I said for Eric's example, his impact comes at the end. If he put his impact at the beginning also, that would be very helpful. If he says, today I want to tell you I have a moral of a story. It's look before you leap. Right? That's what I want to tell you. That's my point. And then people think, wow, that has some kind of meaning. And then they follow you and you get to the end and you repeat the meaning again. That's okay. Right? So you have their impact. Okay. And then I think everybody's familiar with this. But let's just take a quick look at how we have our outlines. Right? Level one, level two, level three. And... I just want to point out, we already covered this in our class, but Microsoft Word has a great outlining feature. And Microsoft Word is especially helpful in making an outline and getting together your dissertation. So in your dissertation, you have your headings, and you can use Microsoft Word to quickly see what are my main headings, what are my subheadings, what are my second level, third level. If you use your styles right, if your styles are not applied correctly, then no, it doesn't work well. So you have to be careful of your styles. If you did your styles right, then you can follow this in Microsoft Word very easily. And the good thing about this is you can move them around, right? So you can make your main points. And then which one is first, which one is second? Well, it doesn't matter. You can move them around when you want to. And so one of the good things about having an outline is you can go ahead and you can make it flexible. You don't have to begin working here on point number one. You can begin working on point number four. So I'm often telling my students, they're saying, well, I didn't do my research yet. How can I write my thesis? And well, you can begin by, you know, writing up a little bit of point number four by saying, in general, what do you think this can be applied to, right, when we talk about a research application? Or, for example, in your research, maybe in the research methodology. You can begin to write that now, so just begin to write that today. You don't need to wait until later. And then later you can move these around, right? Now, we didn't used to always use the Microsoft Word. Right? Microsoft Word was not always around. And what we did like to use before was uh, cards. Right? It was very common. We called them index cards. They're cards. So when I was young, we learned about how to make an outline. Our teacher tells us to get index cards. We're going to buy index cards and make, a thing, make an outline with them. Actually, this is still a very normal way to do research. For example, if you're doing research where you have a lot of observation data, not survey data, but observation data, so you, maybe you use a video or maybe you go watch people or you participate and you need to take lots of notes. 
all those notes need to be broken up because then you need to take all of those and put them into some kind of structure again. So this is a great way because each piece of what somebody says you write down. In fact, in research, this is what we call the unit of analysis. The unit of analysis is the piece of data that you use to analyze. So if you do things like count frequency or um, you pile pieces together to make a category, those pieces are called unit of analysis. Now, usually in a survey, that's very simple. Usually in a survey, the unit of analysis is the consumer you're asking the question, he gives you answers and that's one unit. Another person answers, that's another unit. So the unit of analysis is the respondent. But lots of research does not use that. And so we use index cards. In each unit of analysis we put on the index cards and then we begin to move them around. And it's very common, so researchers will have piles of index cards everywhere. And if they get mixed up, it's a lot of trouble. But we can use software to do this today, usually a little bit safer, I think. Okay? All right, so we use this a metaphor still, index cards. Now, when you make your presentation, though, it still may be helpful to use index cards because it's okay to have index cards in your presentation when you present. Now, of course, you do not want to have an A4 paper and you're reading from it. That is not uh, a good way. But it's quite acceptable for you to have index cards, and those cards you just hold like this, or hold with one hand, and you can use them. Now, you would not use them to read. That would be wrong. What you use them for is for your outline. Because it's easy to forget where, where are you, or what's the next point. And the outline is the map, remember? And so you need the map. So it's quite okay to use index cards. And they have your main points, or your main headings, or your subheadings. And every time you finish, you take one and move it down. That, that's okay. That's okay. But you don't want to write on there and read it. Because if you're reading it, you're going to get stuck. Right? You don't want to get stuck. And reading it will make you get stuck. So index cards in your presentation is quite okay. Of course, when you make it, you lay them out on the table and you try to figure out how the headings work, fill in the details, and then of course we can use Microsoft Word for this if we want to. Okay, we covered that in class, and here's, a, here's what an outline in Microsoft Word looks like. We covered that in class, and remember, you can grab that with your mouse, and you can even move headings around. I like to use this in my Microsoft Word because it helps me quickly see where do I have text that has no style, or the wrong style. So if you have your whole thesis inside Word, and you switch to outline, and then you, you, you remember you can select level, right? Level one, level, if you select level one, it only shows you level one, right? If you select level two, it shows you one and two, right? I select all, and then you can see everything. And if you have anything inside that's not a correct style, it will look strange. So it's a good way to see, are all my styles okay? It's a good way to quickly check. Okay, so this is an example of that. Uh, this is an assignment maybe we'll do a little bit later. So we'll, we're not going to do this assignment right now, but later we'll choose this assignment. Uh, this is the assignment we already did, I mean. This is the assignment we already did. So this next assignment, we're getting mixed up. This next assignment here is our next assignment. That's it. Okay, so this will be not next week because we're not going to be in the class. This will be next, next week in our class we'll cover that okay and again we'll probably use uh, Google to take a look at that okay what I want to do now is I want to look at a couple of videos together with you so let's take a look at a video I've got here you ready okay here we go No, not gonna work. Let me make sure the sound is okay. 
I'm sorry, I, I'm a bit late. Um, um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how to start this. Um, <clears throat> I suppose I, I should start by... Uh, okay, what I want to do is, I want you to use a piece of paper or your computer, and I want you to open up a little notepad, take some notes, and I want you to watch the video with me, and when you watch the video, I want you to think about or note down what are all the things that Joanna, that's the woman in this video, her name's Joanna. <laughs> Write down all the things that are wrong with Joanna. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. You guys are really weird today. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we ready? Everybody got a little notepad, right? So you guys can watch the video there, you can watch it there, and then I can watch it here. Let me drag it to be a little bit bigger so you can see it clearly. I'll put it all the way up here in the corner. Okay. So we want to watch Joanna, and I want you to note everything you see that you think Joanna is doing that's wrong, that's a problem in her presentation. Okay? Joanna is her name. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I'm a bit late. Um, um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how to start this. Um, <clears throat> I suppose I, I should start by uh, telling you something about the uh, the brewery. Um, but it, it's, it's old, of course, uh, very old. And um, uh, and it was founded in 1778, yes, I think that's right. Um, so, it's a very old brewery, and um, we use uh, traditional uh, production uh, methods, and uh, the products themselves are very, um, very, very, very old. Um, as you can see, and, um, and <clears throat> we have an imperial stout, which is very, uh, again, very traditional, and it's described as um, dark, immense, rich, with a depth of burnt fruitiness. This beer is an ideal nightcap. Imperial stout is 50% um, stronger than any of the other beers in, in the uh, export premium range. There. Um, well, oh, we also do uh, a lager. We also make a lager, uh, w w which is European, uh, a U European type beer, um, and, and well, sales have increased a lot o over the last uh, last year. Of course, we were a family firm. Well, in fact, we still are a, a family firm. Uh, as you know, the um, <coughs> the present owner is Ben Westwood. Um, there was a takeover bid. Um, I'm not exactly sure when, but it was resisted, and um, we continue to run um, as, as a family firm. And this is important um, for, for the corporate image. Um, well, in fact, this is why we're here today, to discuss the corporate image and decide if we, well, it needs to change. We, we also have horses. Um, you may have seen them uh, delivering beer to the local pubs. Yes? Yes, yes. Um, production has actually um, dropped uh, a little over the last few years, although, although profits have actually held up. Um, and that's something we need to discuss. I mean, can we actually continue as a small independent brewery? Anyway, that, that's about it. So um, that is the main question today. Um, so I, I don't know whether that helps at all, but uh, it, it's all I can think of, really. So. Uh, I'll leave. Uh, I'll leave. I think that's that. So I'll leave it there. Okay. Okay. That's Joanna's little talk at the 
beginning. Now, what I want to do is I want to watch it one more time. And this time, I think last time you were paying attention to what she was doing wrong. Yeah? You are taking some notes. What I want you to do this time is maybe listen carefully to what she's saying and see if you can understand the, the subject. Okay? Because I think this time you are watching what's wrong, but maybe you missed what's the topic, right? Like, can anyone tell me what, what is her subject? What does the company sell? Horse. <laughs> ah, good, good, Kevin, good. Very close. <laughs> That's a good one. Huh? Any <laughs> does anybody know? Does anybody else have a good guess what they sell? Farm. No. Nobody. Nobody knows, right? Okay. Because it's hard. To, you got to listen a couple times. Okay. So let's watch it again. And now you kind of saw what she was doing wrong, but now pay attention to what she's saying and see if you can try to hear more about the subject because her, we need to understand what is the topic. What is the point of the presentation so that we can understand what she's doing right and what she's doing wrong. Okay, so one more time here. This time try to listen. Let me turn up the, I can turn up the volume a little bit maybe and you can listen to what she's saying. Turn it up a little bit louder. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm a bit late. Um, um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how to start this. Um, <clears throat> I suppose I, I should start by uh, telling you something about the uh, the brewery. Um, but it, it's old, of course, uh, very old, and um, uh, and it was founded in 17, 1778. Yes, I think that's right. Um, so. It's a very old brewery, and um, we use uh, traditional uh, production uh, methods. And uh, the products themselves are very, um, very, very, very old. Um, as you can see, and um, and <coughs> we have an imperial stout, which is very. Uh, Again, very traditional, and it's described as um, dark, immense, rich, with a depth of burnt fruitiness. This beer is an ideal nightcap. Imperial Stout is 50% um, stronger than any of the other beers in, in the uh, export premium range. There. Um, well, oh, we also do uh, a lager, we also make a lager, uh, w w which is European, uh, a U European type beer. Um, and, and well, sales have increased a lot o over the last uh, last year. Of course, we were a family firm. Well, in fact, we still are a, a family firm. Uh, as you know, the um, <coughs> the present owner is Ben Westwood. Um, there was a takeover bid. Um, I'm not exactly sure when, but it was resisted, and um, we continue to run um, as as a family firm. And this is important um, for, for the corporate image. Um, well, in fact, this is why we're here today, to discuss the corporate image and decide if we, well, it needs to change. We, we also have horses. Um, you may have seen them uh, delivering beer to the local pubs. Yes? Yes, yes. Um, production has actually um, dropped uh, a little uh, over the last few years, although although profits have actually held up, um, and that's something we need to discuss. I mean, can we actually continue as a small independent brewery? Anyway, that, that's about it. So um, that is the main question today. Um, so uh, I, I don't know whether that helps at all, but uh, it, it's all I can think of really. So uh, 
I'll leave them. I'll leave. I think that's that, so I'll leave it there, okay. <coughs> Okay, a little bit more clear that time. No? <laughs> I think maybe there's some words in there that are hard for you to follow. So let's, let's uh, first see if anybody got that. So let me come on over and uh, Kevin, want to guess again? A family firm. A family firm, good. That's one point. It's a it's a family mm. firm. It's, she did mention that. It's old. Which means it's what? Which means it's a private company. It's not public. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. probably a small, medium scale company, mm -hmm. right? It's old, so it has a long history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pr production method. <laughs> I don't know. Production produ produce something. They produce something. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. We're getting closer. <laughs> and and she. I want to explain some damage, cold, cold damage. Uh, I <laughs> think I think she's just saying some problems, oh, some problems, yes. yeah, some problems. Okay. And production drop. Production drop. Good point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Production drop. So here we're getting some of the key uh, key points so we can understand it. Okay. Alice, you want to guess what they what they do or what they make or who they are or what they something something. <laughs> What is beauty? Ah, good, 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 good. You got the key word. <laughs> what is it? It is a brewery. 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 You smell it. Brewery. Okay, because I'm from the east coast of America, uh, my BR and my EW accent is very heavy, brewery. So maybe it's hard for you to understand, brewery. Brewery. <laughs> yeah? Somebody get through? Brewery. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> a brewery, right? Brewery. So what? What do you make at a brewery? Beer. 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 Mm. Beer right. So now that makes some sense, right? <laughs> if we put the, put together the brewery <laughs> making beer with Kevin's observation, right? Mm. And so it's a family business. It's private. It's not public. It has a long history. What do they make? They make beer, which makes sense because you would make it and then send it local. Not every beer company is big international beer company. Lots of people like their beer to be local, they better taste, or more flavor or something like this, right? And so especially in Europe where they like their traditional food and beer, right? So that makes sense as a small medium-sized company. Now, what's the deal with horses? <laughs> Anybody have any idea why horses came in? Why horses are mentioned? What do horses do with the story? He mentioned, she mentioned horses and the coal park. <laughs> horses and... And... Get into the factory. Right. They, they deliver the yes, they deliver the beer. Oh. Right. Oh. Right. Oh. right. 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 So the horses pull the cart. Oh. So I think she said horse drawn cart or something like that. Because it's an old traditional company, so you used to deliver in the cart with the horse. But they still do that. I don't think they do it one hundred percent. They just have some kind of like an advertisement, right? It's kind of like marketing. And so maybe they have one or two and they pull the, the, uh, the, 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 the cart, the, the, the truck. Okay, so the horses are for pulling it. That's the way they traditionally, she says it's an old company traditionally and we had horses and then she says, oh, we still have horses. Mm -hmm. And I think they maybe have some horses that do, do that. 
I think there's some American beer. I think it's uh, maybe Budweiser. It's its symbol is a big horse because the horses used to pull the beer to go to the delivery places. Okay, so now we got it, right? So now we know what the company is, right? And we understand what they sell, and we understand uh, who they are. Now let's go around and see what was the problem with Joanna's presentation? What was the issue with her presentation? So let's go ahead and begin with Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna, what was the problem with Joanna? Tell me one thing you think she did wrong. First, she's late and urgent. She's late and she's in a rush, mm -hmm. right? So that's not a good beginning, right? So that's why on time, to begin on time, is a key point, right? So when you're going to make a presentation, it's always a good idea to arrive early and then make sure everything's okay, right? If you go to make a presentation for one of your research papers, probably a good idea to go to the room beforehand and check it out. Make sure it's okay. Make sure everything you need is there. And then, then you're, you can't be late because you're already there early, right? So it totally makes sense. Okay, Bo, what did you see that Joanna was doing wrong? Um, and she doesn't have eye contact, and she concentrated to reading the, the material. Right. And no, she back. has no eye contact, and so she's always looking over at her slides, right? Yes. Uh, and she's always looking at her material, mm -hmm. so no audience eye contact. Now, in our presentations, when we practice, we will not have an audience, except me, I'm one person, <laughs> right? And maybe in here, you don't even have to see, I go in the other room, you don't even see me, right? But you look at the camera. So when you make your presentation, you go ahead and look right at the camera like that's your audience, okay? So it's important in a presentation to have the eye contact. <laughs> What's so funny about that? That's the camera right there. That's what we'll do. Exactly. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So, um, let me see. Uh, Joanna about Laura. How about Laura? Laura. 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 I was going to say, Marie and Laura are two absentees today. Laura goes to see a doctor. She's not well today? Yeah. <laughs> and Marie. So, do I need to email Laura about the presentation, or will somebody tell her? Okay. All right, uh, Paul, can you tell me something that was wrong with Joanna's presentation? Tell me one thing. She's nervous. She's very nervous, right? You can see Joanna's very nervous, right? And what, what happens, last week, what did we talk about if you're nervous? Remember last week we were talking about, let me see if I can make the video pause right there in the middle. Um. Yeah. You can see Joanna's quite, quite nervous, right? And what did we say last week? We said that when you make a presentation, your audience is going to feel the way you feel, right? So if you feel nervous, they're going to feel nervous, right? We, we said it's easy to spread out. If you feel relaxed, they will be much easier to be relaxed. So I feel nervous just watching Joanna, because she's oh, getting very nervous. It makes me feel nervous too. Don't you feel a little bit nervous when she's... Right? Don't you feel that way? So, so uh, a, good, a good one there. Eric? Yeah. Uh, uh, Stanbrook? Stutter. Stammer, stutter. And shake. His body is shake. And sigh. And too much. Sighing a lot. She was doing a lot of sighing, wasn't she? She's like, I'm sorry, I'm late. Maybe too too much noise. Right, a little bit too much noise, right? So, of course. Stuttering, stammering, sighing, this is not always bad, but what's the point, right? If we don't see a point, then it's hard for us to follow, right? 
So she doesn't make a point. She's just... Uh, oh, yeah. So we feel more and more uncomfortable and more and more nervous. So that's a, a, good, a good point. Okay. Uh, uh, Alice? Um, One thing. She didn't have a clear man point in the star. Yeah, so that's one reason it's hard for us to follow. Because she does not begin with a clear main point. She does kind of end with a main point. Mm -hmm. Did you notice? What was her main point at the end? How to keep the company become independent or... Right, how to keep the company independent. I think they have pressure that other companies would just buy them. And they want to stay independent. That makes sense. That's a very good point. But because she waits... She waits till the very, very, very end. And even more than the end. It's after the end. She says, oh, yeah, yeah. And that's the main point. <laughs> right? Remember? She even, so it's like post, post ending, right? So, yeah, it's not very helpful. It doesn't keep us, doesn't keep us interested in it. Okay. Kevin, do you have, uh, do you have an idea? Mm, no. Green team at the first yeah, so at the beginning we have no idea what's really happening, right? She doesn't give us any, any good instruction. What is this? What's happening? What is this for? Who is she? Right? Now, we, in this case, I think she's presenting to inside her company to people above her. Yeah, above her. So the people around that desk are probably going to be people who are uh, senior to her. So let's think of her like a, a consultant or maybe some kind of uh, marketing manager or something, right? So she's kind of trying to give that an idea. So she doesn't really need to um, tell them about time, about, well, about question time. She should tell them how long it's going to be. And she certainly should tell us what's the point at the beginning, right? Okay, very good. Uh, who's left? Amber? Mm -hmm. She was not well prepared. She was not well. How so? And not this the main point to the car. How? Give me an example of not well prepared. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Moving through all her things. So there's no, there's no real outline. I feel there's no outline structure. There's no map that we're talking about today. How do you go from here to there? We don't know. And every time she talks, you feel it's like this point is not related to that point. It's just like another point, right, off the top of her head. So that's a little bit frustrating. Okay, who's left? Alan? I think she's not sure about information she mentioned, such as the foundation. I think that's probably the most serious mistake she makes. It seems like she doesn't know what she's talking about. And this is one reason it's hard for us to understand what she's saying. Because she doesn't seem to know. So when you make your presentation, I always think the most important point, more important than anything else, is that your information you totally, 100% know. That way when you talk, even if you get mixed up, even if you get lost, even if you get confused, even if you make a mistake, it's okay because you know the information. You see? But if you don't know the information and you make a mistake, everybody makes mistakes, you get lost, everybody gets lost sometimes, you get nervous, everybody gets nervous, then what happens? You don't know what to do because you don't know the information. So it's important. Now, you could say, well, that's hard. How can I know all the information? But that's one of my key points. At the beginning, you need to decide my topic, my main point. Then this main point is very, very clear. And then you have a heading and the subtopics, and this you know. Maybe you don't know everything else, but you do know this. And that way, whatever happens, you get mixed up, you get lost, you just say, oh, okay, wait a second. Uh, okay, I remember. You just begin again. So I think Joanna's most serious problem is I feel she doesn't know her topic. I mean, would you trust her? <laughs> right? I wouldn't trust her too, too much, right? Okay, Celia? Mm, I think she's repeating the words. She repeats herself. Do you have an example of how? Um, she, 
she was saying things like, uh, she would say, and uh, things are going down, the sales are going down, we're not doing well. She's like saying the same thing over and over, is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, repeat, she, she is repeating the information, and, and when she showed the information, in the, what, what, what's, that, what's that thing? That, what is that thing? <laughs> what is <laughs> that, that thing? The, the machine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what is it? Anybody know? Uh, it's a projector. We have it. We call it overhead projector. OHP overhead because it has this overhead oh. projector. Can okay. she even post the wrong, wrong? Right. So you had it backwards and all yeah. that. Now, maybe when you go make a pres presentation, you don't use an overhead projector, but maybe you will use an overhead projector. Let me tell you why you may use an overhead projector. Because if you go to a conference. Lots of conferences overseas are not held on university, but they're at some hotel. And if they're at a hotel, then the hotel may not have a computer projector, or they may have it and it's very expensive to rent. And so the conference may not rent it, but they may have these. Right? So you need to check before, and usually today, almost everyone does use the electronic uh, connection to your VGA or your HD, well, VGA. These don't use, the, the, even projectors today don't usually have HDMI. But I have been to conferences. I have been to conferences in the last few years where in the hotel they use these, and because if they rent the projector from the hotel, it's very expensive, and the people coming they cannot bring it from the university because it would be too dangerous something happens. It's not theirs. It belongs to the university, you see? So it's not unusual. So I have had times where we go to the conference and we go in and people who want to present cannot present because they do not have any overhead projector slides ready. They only brought their USB. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what's the answer to this? Number one is uh, be prepared beforehand check check, right? Uh, another thing is, you can prepare a few slides for backup, just in case. But it is very, it's more and more rare. But still it's possible. I, I have it happen sometimes. Okay, so, yeah, she got things backwards. Now, maybe you don't use this machine, an OHP overhead projector. Maybe you use a computer projector. That's, that's okay. But still, you should go before and check. Because how many presentations have you seen where they connect and they don't know, and then they connect again, they don't know, and they just give me another computer and they don't know. And how many have you seen that? How many times? Hundreds of times. Thousands of times. Right? It happens all the time. Right? Or sometimes you go to a, a, a conference and they have the projector ready and the computer ready. Although I think it's very rare, but sometimes they do. In Taiwan we do, but overseas people don't do it our Taiwan way and you have to connect your own computer. Or they have a computer, but then you go to the computer and it's a Macintosh and you don't know how to use it. Or it's Linux and you don't know how to use it. I mean, it's not that hard to learn, but you need to take a minute to figure it out, right? So you need to go beforehand. And she was not ready, she didn't know how, she didn't know which way was up. Okay? All right, Any, anybody else want to add anything to Joanna's? Example of a bad presentation? Any other ideas? Sure. Yeah. I have one idea. I think, although she's late, but maybe she can act the horse when he, when she, when she appears. <laughs> Eric's got all these crazy ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eric's very creative, man. <laughs> we can act like horse and, and yeah, I'm like, <laughs> hey, hi, <laughs> relax, <laughs> we can start. <laughs> Okay, well, you do have a good point, Eric, and that is she doesn't feel very relaxed. Now, the problem, the problem with what Eric's saying is true, but I think in this case that might not work because her audience are her superiors, right? And all you need is, you know, one superior to be angry, and you lose a lot. If it were your subordinates underneath you, I think that's much, much easier, right? But yeah, I think Eric has a point she has no way to distract 
or take away from her problem. Now, maybe being late is not her fault. Maybe she had to be late. That's possible. But the question is, how do you continue, right? In our presentations, there'll be times where you get mixed up or you forget things, but you must move forward. You must keep going. She has to keep going, but she doesn't help anything because she doesn't help us relax, right? So I think Eric's point is, she needs to find a way to help the audience relax. I agree 100%. Okay, anything else? Anybody else have a point? Yes? She has a negative uh, um, attitude. Joanna says Joanna has a negative attitude. <laughs> okay, give me an example of why you think she's, what makes you feel negative about, about her attitude? At the end, she said, uh, I will leave, uh, I will leave, uh, leave you. Just leave it to you. Yes. Uh-huh. She did kind of say that, right? Yeah, and I feel lots of her words are very, uh, what we'd say, in, uh, turt. It's very like, turt means like short and, and abrupt, just cut off. It's like, well, this is the problem, and that's it, and that's up to you, and that's what we're here for today. <laughs> so it does feel like she's not involving the audience and has no relationship with the audience. So it's a, it, sounds, it sounds a little bit rude. Right, right. Well, she should be more respectful then, right? Okay, I think so. Obviously, she's she's not organized, right? But then there's no there's there's a lack of respect. Okay, good one. That's a good one. Okay, Joanne has a good point. Anybody else have a point? So words Kevin? on the slide slide is too small. Way too small. Yeah. Way too small. Not just a little bit. I can't. You can't read them at all, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? So she, her, her media is not ready. It's not well presented. We're going to have a whole chapter on that. But of course, next week you need to make your slide for your presentation. So uh, the key point to the slides is they need to be easy to understand, and they need to make their points clearly. So today in our exercise, when we did our exercise earlier, remember we had, I was always looking and I was saying, what is A and what is 1 and 2? What, what is this, right? So your slides need to help us understand that. What is the main point? What is the sub point? What is the supporting point? How do they all go together? And I feel that lots of times when people make slides, the problem with their slides is, that their slides do a lot of things, like they make a point and then they have another thing fly in and another thing fly in and a picture come in. And I, I like, does that really help, right? Does that really help to make the point clear, right? And like Kevin was saying, in this case, when she made her slide, it may look okay, but when she puts it up there, the words are all so small, nobody can follow what it's saying, right? So I would suggest you spend less time making a fancy slide and just try to make it clear, right? And what do I mean by clear? When I, when I say clear, I mean it's helping me see that map. Where am I now? Where am I going? What's the next step? I want to follow you. I want to follow. And in Joanna's presentation, did you notice that was one of the problems? We don't really know. Is she moving forward or is she just saying, it's a private company, blah, and then it's uh, got horses, blah, you know. There's no, there's no system. So for your slides, the key point is the slide is not really important except to help us see your system. Just like today's assignment, I want to see your system, right? So if your slide helps me see your, sis your system, that's good. That's fine. So nice, big, clear, easy to read. In this case, as Kevin says, Joanna's presentation was not very good on those slides. Not helpful at all. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, let's watch another video here. And this time, we're going to get another person. Let me see if I can get to this one here. This would be this one.
Okay, in this case, we have another video. In this video is Mr. Maxwell, Georg Maxwell, and he is going to lead people to tour his factory, his company's factory. So, in this case, his audience are outsiders and below him, subordinate. So it's a completely different situation, right? These are going to be people who are under him from outside the company. So let's see how uh, Mr. Maxwell does on his presentation. Again, let's watch it once and you can uh, take notes about what you see as being negative or uh, poor or bad parts of his presentation. Okay, everybody ready? Push the play button here. Right, the tour. I've uh, got some overheads here to to give you a picture of. Uh, oh well, never mind. We'll manage without. Anyway, I'll. Uh, I'll tell you something about the plant. We'll be having a look around. I don't know how much you know about us. Perhaps some of you have been here before. Anyway, I'll start by telling you a bit about the plant, so that later you can um, ask questions, and it should help to understand the process. So, here we are in, in the main building. That's a short one. Okay, you ready for one more time? Okay, so now listen to what he's saying, see if you can follow this. Much easier, I think. Just listen one more time. Right, the tour. I've uh, got some overheads here to to give you a picture of. Uh, oh well, never mind. We'll manage without. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll tell you something about the plant. We'll be having a look around. I don't know how much you know about us. Perhaps some of you have been here before. Anyway. I'll start by telling you a bit about the plant, so that later you can um, ask questions, and it should help to understand the process. So, here we are in, in the main building. Here we are in the main building. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, begin. Kevin, what did you see that uh, Gayoff has done wrong? don't know about the audience. He doesn't know who they are. So when he tries to introduce him, himself, and them, he's like, well, okay, you're some people. Okay? All right? Okay, Alice? Always sway his body. <laughs> Say again? Sway his body. Like moving <laughs> back and forth. Mm. So... How to say this? Distracting. Distracting. Not focused. I think distracting, not focused, would be the, the key to say to that. Um, okay, body language. Body language is not good. Just keep it simple, right? Body language is no good. Okay. Amber? He's not that. He's not. <laughs> he's got his hands in his pockets. That's more body language, actually, right? That's body language, too. Um, hands in pocket and then not giving any. His signal to the audience is unclear. So, don't you. F doesn't he make you feel. How does he make you feel? 
<laughs> makes you feel like, you know, it's like not comfortable. Yeah. He's not comfortable, we're not comfortable. You see, that's what I'm always emphasizing. In the presentation, the way you feel is the way the audience will feel. You feel comfortable, they'll feel comfortable. You know your information, they'll feel confident. You're confident, they're confident. If you feel nervous, they'll feel nervous. If you're all shaking around, then they'll, they'll want to move around too. So it's, it's very much sending that, that signal. Okay? Paul? She didn't prepare his graphic. He wants to show to... He, he, he's, he goes to show it, and then he's like, oh, well... <laughs> right, I think he has, like, uh, maybe OHP slides, or he has something he wants to show, but there's no machine or anything to show it, right? So he just says, oh, well. <laughs> right? Right? Okay, very good. Eric? Yeah. Uh, I think... I think... Uh, he, he's always shaking shake like a zombie. <laughs> like, like, a, like a song opera, Walking Dead. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 so, and, and I think maybe he had to, uh, to make more positive terms. Such as? Such like when he's speaking? Yes, yeah, because he's, uh, the audience is below, mm -hmm. so he to make more positive and, and more confidence. Mm -hmm. He needs more confidence. Not like a yeah. zombie. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of looks like he's half asleep is what you mean. A zombie's a dead person, right? Yeah. So it looks like he's half asleep, right? Okay. So what are you watching a TV show, Walking Dead or something? <laughs> Very similar. Is it any good? I haven't watched it. Is it good? Walking Dead? Not bad, not bad. <laughs> okay, Joanna, what did you see that's uh, interesting? Yeah. I think there are no rules of, of his company because he always searching for something. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, the factory has the rule mm -hmm. to in order to put down the high quality product. So. so I don't quite get your main point. Yes. Um, I'm for okay, so it's kind of like Joanna, he doesn't seem to know what he's talking about. So he's uncertain, okay. right? That makes sense, right? And that's what, if he's uncertain, then we feel uncertain, uncertain too, right? And we're like, oh, what's he doing, right? So we, he feels uncertain, and then we feel uncertain, okay? Mm -hmm. Bo? Mm -hmm. He lost himself, and he didn't talk with, like he, uh, he said that, as you, uh, like, he think that, the audience has like come to the factory or company before. Mm -hmm. and say, if mm -hmm. you have a question, or as you have been before, or something. Yeah, he's confused no, about <laughs> he's confused about who they are and then what the thing is for asking the questions and all these kinds of things. Right? Okay, Alan. Mm -hmm. It seems that he didn't pay much effort to this presentation. Yeah, he kind of rushed in. Mm. Two, just like Joanna did, and he, he said at the beginning, he said, well, I've been told to do this, mm. right? You know, I, I have to do this. He, he's like, <laughs> doesn't really want to do it, so he's kind of got a bad, kind of got a bad uh, attitude about it, right? And Celia? I think he can, he, he can introduce himself at first. He should introduce himself. We don't really know who, who yeah. he is. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. These are all good points, and our class time is over, but before you go, before you go, I must show you the presentations better. I cannot just show you the bad <laughs> presentations. That would not be so useful. So let's see if we can watch the same people doing a little bit better, and then I want you to look and see what were they doing that's better. So let me see if I can find that. Oops, I don't want the whole screen. There we go. These are bad. I want to find the good. This would be Joanna. I can't read the words, it's not very clear, is it? 
Let me see. How about this one? No, 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 not this. How about this? As you can see, and um, that's a bad one. <laughs> That's a very bad one. Okay. Visual aids. This one. Yes. Thank you. The little check, right? Ta ta means bad. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let me grab this down here. Okay. Let's look at Joanna doing a little bit better. A lot better, actually. A very important, perhaps the most important element in our corporate identity is our product range. The first thing to be said about this product range is that it's very diverse. Let's take our premium export lager, Hohen Brown. Now this product has always been positioned at the top end of the market. It has a very high price and is only available through specialist retail outlets. Altogether, it's quite exclusive. On the other hand, our Rutter's Bitter has an entirely different personality. It's brewed in a traditional way. We put a lot of malt in it, which gives it a rich golden colour. And as far as I know, it's at a medium price and sold through most supermarkets. So, as you can see, these are two very different products. One, a not market German type Pilsner, the other, a very English bitter. Our problem is we're no longer sure about what sort of brewery we are. Anyway, let's leave the products for a moment and turn to our recent record on the, on the production side. To make sure we're all in the picture, I prepared a graph which illustrates our production record over the last 12 years. As you can see, we're only going to be looking at bottled beer production. Now, 12 years ago, we had an annual output of 245,000 bottles, as you can see. Over the next six to seven years, production grew steadily and reached 480,000 way back in 1990. Those were the easy years. It seemed all we had to do was turn up at work, produce the beer, and the beer would sell itself. The last five years, have been quite different. Production flattened out to around 480,000 for four years and then, more worryingly, dropped to 460,000 last year. So, this is the background to our meeting today. We can no longer sit back and let the well-established name of Westwood do the work for us. Okay. So I think if we look at Joanna's presentation there, uh, what right away we see it's organized, right? Very organized. Also her appearance, maybe you didn't notice, but her hair looks better, <laughs> her dress looks better, right? She looks, more she looks more organized, she acts more organized, she's confident. And also, I want you to notice when we watch Joanna speaking, she did not speak very fast. Lots of times she said nothing. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because we're waiting for her and we feel she's going to the next step, right? Key point, you're taking me from the beginning to the end. So I'm following her, right? So she's, she says, now I want to show you the production. Okay, look here, it's okay. Step by step, quietly, it's all right. You don't need to have lots of talking every second and lots of action, that's okay. So I felt that she is very organized this time. Also, the 
I think if you listened to her this time, and you, you did not know what the company was this time, you'd be easier to guess what do they make. Because she said, she said many times, she said beer, beer production, right? Before she's like, oh, you don't know what she's talking about, <laughs> right? So a much better job this time around, okay? Now, uh, let me see. We'll look more at that. We're just getting a little preview. I don't want you just to see bad today, and then you walk away and it was only bad. Let's see if we have uh, gay off here today. Hello and welcome to Standard Electronics. I'm Jeff Maxwell, the factory manager in charge of the plant you'll be seeing today. I know some of you have come a long way today, so we aim to make your tour both interesting and worthwhile. Before we start the tour, I'd like to give you a brief presentation about the company. This will help to put the production side of the business into context. My talk will last about 15 minutes, and I'll be using the flip chart. Now, there's quite a lot to cover, so I'd be grateful if you'd hold any questions until the end of my talk. As you can see, I've divided up my presentation into three main parts. Firstly, we'll run briefly through the history of the company. Secondly, I'll tell you something about our main markets. This is important in understanding the production process. And finally, I'll come to the people, our most important asset. OK, let's start with the history. Standard started out as a private limited company when it was okay. basically just the beginning, right? So, what do you feel different about that? I think it's quite clear. He comes out and he feels like he's happy to see you. Mm -hmm. And that makes us feel happy too, right? You can see he says who he is, right? He says what his uh, presentation time is. He even tells us he's going to use the flip chart. It's called a flip chart. So, there's a big piece of paper. You can flip it over, so it's called a flip chart. Lots of people like to use them. Uh, we don't use them in Jongsin very much, but some schools love to use them. And the reason is because they're big and you can write right on them and, and you can tear it off and go back and forth and uh, it's useful that way. And then you saw his presentation beginning. He made his map very clear. A, B, C. Now we can follow him. In fact. Now it came to an end, but we're just like, okay, I'm ready to go. You know, just, just beginning to get ready. So it's very different than his first time, right? Okay, so in the class, I want to show you examples like this. A good example, a not so good example. We look at the bad example, see how we can improve. Look at the good example, see what's good about it. And we're going to do the same thing with our videos. So we're going to shoot your video, and then you get to look at it, and then get better later, okay? All right, so is there any question about the video recording for your first presentation? Remember, the audience is outside, subordinate, below you, they're consumers, they're not inside your company, and you're going to do a general introduction of your company, so they don't really know much. So it's kind of like a gay-off situation. You come over and going to present your company. And Celia, I saw you guys change your company. I wrote it up on the Google Sheet. You went to the Sands, yeah. Las Vegas Sands. It's a more dynamic company. Okay. Any problems with your companies? Anything? Any problems? No problems? Cho uh, getting information from the annual reports? A lot of reading. Can we choose a background? Can you choose a background? I mean, I mean the reader background. If you can give me one, do you want to give me one? No. <laughs> you can give me one. If you mean choose it, that means I have to like we have to find the time and I have to show you the possible selection. It's kind of a lot of time. If you can find one, you can give me one. I'll use it. Be fine. 
I try. <laughs> Our presentation, our presentation is the main point is about the company introduction. You make the main point. We make the main point. <laughs> I cannot tell you your main point. Up to us. You see, I just told you there's people coming to visit the company and you need to introduce them. They're from outside, they're not investors, although they might invest, I don't know, but they're just small consumers or investors. They're nobody, nothing key, general audience. They don't really know anything about your company you're going to introduce five minutes. So kind of like outside, under visitors. Okay? All right, then, if there's no questions, we're going to wrap up. i got to run over to my other office. So everybody's okay.